Amen, amen, amen. Hey, today is week two of our sermon series, just talking about the vision for the year, the word that God's given me for the year for our church. Uh, Last year, we opened up this sermon series with the idea of greater, uh, pursuing immeasurably more. And last week, we talked about the idea of greater, what that means and what that looks like. Today, we're going to talk about immeasurably more. But before we do that, just a couple of reminders from last week. We took our scripture out of John chapter 14, verse 12, that says, Again, Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I've been doing. They will do even greater. Everybody say greater. Greater. They will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. Because I am going to the Father. Greater is possible because of Jesus. It's not that we're greater than Jesus. We're not greater than Jesus. We'll never be greater than Jesus. Jesus is the greatest of all time. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus didn't say, you'll be greater than me. He said, greater things than these you will do because I go to the Father. And what he was referring to was the future of when he would ascend to heaven and then send the Holy Spirit. Somebody say amen. This is where Pentecostals should get excited. This is when he said, I'm going to the Father, but go wait in Jerusalem for the promised Holy Spirit. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the other parts of the world. This is what we call the day of Pentecost. When the Holy Spirit came, they were all together in one place. The Holy Spirit fell, and there appeared to be What looked like tongues of fire above their head, there was a mighty wind in the room. And the Bible says they all began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. And this was evidence of the Holy Spirit. This is what made them greater. Not speaking in tongues, the power of the Holy Spirit is what made them greater. Greater in us and greater through us. Somebody say amen. Amen. So when we sing, oh God, my God, I need you, hello. If I'm going to be greater, I need him. Because I can't be greater on my own. I can't be greater in me. It's him in me that makes me greater. Amen. It's him in me that creates greater work. That's why Jesus said, because I'm going to the Father, you can do greater things than these. And we realized last week that greater is not a permanent position, but greater is a daily decision to listen, to follow, and obey the Lord. The idea of being greater is is, is not a place to be reached. Greater is not a destination. It's a journey. We don't all of a sudden achieve greater and that's it. Why? Because there's always going to be greater for us to experience when we walk with Jesus. If we're not dead, he's not. If we're not dead, he's not. Right. So there's always greater things to experience in Jesus if... We will choose on a daily basis to get up and to follow him wherever he leads. If we will continue to surrender our lives to him daily, to be obedient to his voice, then we will experience greater things. There are three things we talked about last week that we will need in order to experience greater in Christ. The first one is a greater confidence. We need a greater confidence. That confidence comes from a relationship with the Holy Spirit. We need to be able to believe in a God who will do what he said he would do. Somebody say amen. Amen. We need to believe in a God that says, I can do all things. Nothing's too hard for God. We, We have to have confidence, not in ourselves, but in him. It's not a confidence that looks in the mirror and says, hey, you're all that. It's a confidence that looks up and says, you got this. You got this. I'm going to follow you. I believe you called me, and he who called is faithful. And if God calls us, he equips us, and he will make it possible in Jesus' name. So we got to have a confidence in him. The second thing we got to have is clarity. If we're going to follow Jesus, we got to be able to see Jesus. So if we're going to follow Jesus, we've got to be able to see Jesus. And sometimes in our lives, there's just way too much stuff in our lives in order to be able to see the Lord. Sometimes we have too many voices speaking. We can't hear the Lord. 
Not every voice in your life is the voice of the Lord. Not everyone who's speaking to you is the voice of the Lord. Sometimes we got to do whatever we can to shut out all the other voices just to hear his one. Sometimes we got to go back and clear the stage and take away everything that would hinder us from being able to follow with clarity, to see the path he has for us, and to be able to follow with confidence in a God that says, follow me. Amen? So we got to have courage. we got to have confidence, and we got to have clarity. That last word, courage. Anybody have any regrets in your walk with Jesus? Am I the only one? Me and you, girl. Shoot, I see that hand. You and me. We'll live with those regrets, right? Anybody else have regrets? You look back and say, man, I wish I would have done that. I think I missed the Lord there. I should have done that. You know, the older I get, when, when I realize that the time I have left on earth is probably less than the time I've spent on earth, barring a miracle. My last name is Abram, so maybe I'd be Abraham and live a little older. But barring a miracle, I've, I've, I've got more behind me than what's ahead of me in years, but not in experience in Jesus' name, because he's got greater for me. But I start to recognize, man, I wish I would have done this at that time. Maybe I, I missed it. I, I wish I would have done, if only I would have believed, I could have, you know what I'm talking about? We lack this courage. And I don't know if you're like me. I mean, there were 11 people that stayed in the boat when Jesus said, come see me. And only one got out, right? And now everybody talks about Peter and says, Peter, he's, he sank. But only after he walked on water. Peter walked on water. Let's not forget, Peter had courage enough to get out of the boat and to walk towards Jesus. Right? Peter did something no one's ever done. Peter walked on water. We all give Peter a bad rap over that night because he sank down in the water. But we forget that Peter had all the courage to get out of the boat and walk towards Jesus. How many of us would be the ones sitting in the boat watching Peter walk to Jesus? Sometimes on Sunday, that's what I feel like. I feel like you guys are all sitting in the boat and just watching me walk towards Jesus. And I'm like, come on, come on, let's walk together. God, give us courage. If we're going to pray for greater things, then God, give us the courage to pursue them when you lead us that direction, right? Give us the courage to follow you. If we want greater, we're going to need confidence and clarity and courage. And I believe this. Jesus, greater in us, equals Jesus, greater through us. I say that again so you understand. Jesus greater in us equals Jesus greater through us. We talk about that a little bit more with this idea of pursuing immeasurably more. Pursuing immeasurably more. Take this idea from Ephesians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul speaking and teaching the church of Ephesus through his letter. He says, for this reason in verse 14, of chapter 3, for this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. And I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power. Everybody say power. Power. Everybody say power. Power. Say power like you believe in power. Power. Not Tonesco power, godly power. 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 Yeah, I don't think it was power. That part of the sea. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, there's some power involved, right? He said, I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit, through his spirit, through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Not that Christ would visit every once in a while this year but that Christ would dwell in your heart. Paul was praying, I want Christ in you. I pray that Christ is in you. That is my prayer for you today, that Christ would be in you. In you. He says, and I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have what? 
may have power. may have power. That word again. There's that word again. You see a theme here? We're not called to walk powerless. We're called to walk powerful. Paul says, I pray. I pray that you may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. And then he says, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more. Everybody say more. more. Everybody say more. more. Immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power. According to his power. According to his power. That is at work within us. And Paul is trying to get a message across. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Amen, man. That is one of the most powerful prayers you'll find in Scripture. It's the Apostle Paul praying for the church at Ephesus, wanting them to understand that there is power when Christ is a part of our lives. There is power in Jesus. We are made powerful when he is in us. Somebody say amen. amen. So many believers today walk powerless. Why? Because they think that just coming and listening makes us powerful. But the reality is it's an ongoing relationship where we abide in Christ and Christ abides in us. That's where our power comes from. It's like a power source. If you plug something into a wall socket, it's only powerful as long as it's what? Plugged in. But if you unplug it, what happens? It loses power. So if the only time you're plugged into Jesus is on Sunday for a couple hours at church, and you unplug, you got no power for the rest of the week. We've got to stay plugged into Jesus 24-7, abiding in Christ. He says, abide in me, and I will abide in you. That means to stay. That word abide means to stay. We read about it in the book of John. Abide in me, and I will abide in you. If you stay with me, I will stay in you. And when he stays in us, all of a sudden, we become more powerful. Why? Because there's power in Jesus. Power for all kinds of things in our life. But we read this and we know there's power for immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine. I don't know about you, but I got a great imagination. I can imagine a lot of things, man. I'm just telling you. And I, I, I'm not ever afraid to go for the big ask. You understand what I'm saying? I, I can ask God for some pretty big things in Jesus' name. I, mean, I got a great imagination. I serve the God of imagination. And the Bible says that he is able to do immeasurably more. It means you can't even measure how much more that he can do above what you and I can even ask or imagine. I don't know about you, that excites me. That, that gets me fired up. If he can do immeasurably more, and he can do immeasurably more in me and immeasurably more through me, look out, devil. Look out, devil. There's a whole new me coming in 2024. Amen. There's a whole new me coming in 2024. Why? Because I'm going to pursue immeasurably more and watch God do greater things in me and through me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And that's what I want for all of us. And when we talk about immeasurably more, there's four things I want to share with you today. I believe there's four areas of immeasurably more that God wants to move in in our church and in our lives. And number one is simply this, immeasurably more presence. We want more of the presence of God in our lives and in our church. Paul said, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts. I want to go back to this whole idea again for just a moment of abiding in Christ. Is Christ in your heart? David said it like this. One thing I ask of the Lord, only one thing I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. One thing David asked for, but one thing David wanted more than anything else was to dwell in the house of the Lord. 
Well, you and I are a little bit more blessed than David was because now we realize that there is no physical temple where the presence of the Lord dwells. In David's time, there was the Ark of the Covenant that sat in the Holy of Holies, which was beyond the holy place, which was beyond the courtyard, and only people, there's normal people like you and I couldn't even go to the holy place. We could just go to the courtyard. We couldn't even get close to the Ark of the Covenant where the presence of God was. Only the priests could do that. And David said, I long to dwell in the temple where the presence of God is. But now you and I, because of the death of Jesus, we don't have a physical temple built by human hands. According to the word, our bodies are the temple created by God himself. We are the temple. Jesus in us, 24-7. We have the opportunity. We have the privilege. We have the chance of being able to abide with Jesus all day, every day. Somebody say amen. Amen. We don't have to rely on somebody else. David said, this one thing I ask, one thing I seek. And guess what? The one thing that David asked for and the one thing that David sought, you and I have the privilege of being able to experience because of Jesus. He goes on to say it in another psalm, Psalm 84. He says this in verse 10, better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I want you to think for a minute the most beautiful place you've ever been. Where's the most beautiful place you've ever been? You got any big travelers out there? Any big travelers? Don't be shy. Raise your hand. It's all good. You travel, you'd like to travel. Think of the most beautiful place you've ever seen. Where is it? Somebody tell me, what's the most beautiful place you've seen? The Serengeti. The Serengeti pretty beautiful place I would agree somebody else the most beautiful place you've seen don't be shy anybody going once yeah go ahead what huh never seen it praise God somebody else most beautiful place you've been to yeah huh Dubai. Dubai's cool, man. It's a cool place if you like the desert. (laughs) It is beautiful, though, man. Some of the coolest buildings in the world are in Dubai. If you're an architect fan, that's a place to go visit, especially at night when it's all lit up at night. That's cool. Uh, Anybody else? Yeah, tell me. Barcelona. Barcelona, Spain. Hello. I'll fist bump that. One of my favorite cities ever is Madrid, Spain. Spain's a cool place, man. If you've never been to Spain, it's beautiful. Uh, I love to travel, and I've had the opportunity to see a lot of beautiful places. But I would have to agree with David over all the things I've seen from Europe to Asia to South America to North America to Africa. There is nothing more beautiful than being in the presence of God. Better is one day in the courts of the Lord than thousands elsewhere. David said it best. His presence. His presence. There is no place more beautiful than being in the presence of God. When we begin to understand the majesty of God. You know, the Bible warns us do not lose your awe of God, your wonder of who He is. Being in His presence, He reveals the wonder of who He is. And there's nothing more beautiful than being in the presence of God. Better is one day in His courts than a thousand elsewhere. In 2024, Lord, I want immeasurably more of Your presence in my life. From the moment that I wake up. (laughs) Come on. There it is. Until I lay my head. From the moment that I wake up, I want to be in his presence. Even when I sleep, I want the peace of God. 
I want his presence. Why? Because it's his presence in me that produces greater. Let us seek his presence more in this upcoming year. This gives me an opportunity to shameless plug coming up starting tomorrow, 21 days of prayer and fasting. 21 days of prayer and fasting starts tomorrow. Would you join us? Would you join us these next 21 days? Praying and fasting, seeking his presence in Jesus' name as a church body. Can we do that together? Just seeking the Lord, seeking his presence. He's got more for us if we'll pursue it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Starting tomorrow, 21 days of prayer, fasting, seeking the Lord. More of his presence, more of his presence, more of his presence. Somebody say amen. amen. Number two, immeasurably more power. I want to be stronger than I was last year. I want to be more powerful than Jesus than I was last year. I want to see the power of God working in my life like never before. When I think of the power of God, there's so many things I think of in Scripture, things that people have witnessed that I've never witnessed yet. He he says in in Ephesians that he may strengthen you with power through his spirit. I I want to see more things happen. I, I believe God for miracles in Jesus' name, and I want to see him in Jesus' name. I want my generation to see what previous generations have seen. I want to see God move like he's never moved before. I want to see God do things I've never seen him do before. I I want to see the power of God working in my life and through my life. I want to be a part of things that I've only read about. The same power that was at work when Moses raised his staff and parted the sea in Jesus' name. I want to see that kind of power. I want to see the same kind of power that was with Joshua when he stepped in the middle of the Jordan at flood stage and and the Jordan waters parted. How many of you need waters to part in your life this year? Come on. How many of you need waters to part in your life this year? You've been praying for God to do something major, to move some things aside this year. In Jesus' name. Victory. In Jesus' name. It's that same power that we see. When, I, when, when Elijah called fire down from heaven, fire down from heaven to consume the, the sacrifice on the altar, but not just that, to eliminate all the false prophets. Man, I need God to clean some things out of my life this year. I want to see fire fall from heaven in Jesus' name. I want to see the power of God working and moving like never before. I want to see the power of God. The same power that turned water into wine. The same power that made the blind man see. The same power that healed a woman with the issue of blood. The same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you and me. That's what scripture says. It's the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead that dwells in you and me. It's that same resurrection power that exists in you and exists in me. The same one that existed in Christ exists in you and me. And I'm ready to see it in Jesus' name. Anybody with me? Come on. I tell you like I told I wish I had a camera right here. I do. I wish I had a camera so you could watch yourselves on Sunday. You would understand sometimes what it feels like to preach to people that you really think are sleeping. There's like no response. We were talking about the same power that raised Christ from the dead. And some of you are like, I'm beginning to wonder if it's really there. You may be dead. Makes me want to pray like Ezekiel. Make these dry bones come alive. (laughs) We got some dry bones, the valley of dry bones back here. Lord, stir them. Make them rattle in Jesus' name. Don't you want to wake up for Jesus? Don't you want to see Jesus do more in your life than ever before? Don't you hunger for more of Him? That same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you and me, but we don't see it because we don't walk in it. God, give us the confidence to walk in it. Give us the courage to walk in it. Give us the clarity to see where you're leading. And by all means, give us life. 
to follow you. Church, I want more. I want more. I want more. I want more. Not just for me, but for us as a church. I want more power in our church. I want to see God move. I want to see God do miracles. I want to see God do miracles. Look, here's what I believe. The measure of our faith will determine the measure of our miracle. The level of our pursuit will determine the level of power we receive. And, and I know that there's more people in here than the five that said amen when I, want to say, when I said I want to see miracles. I, there's more people in here that need a miracle. Amen. We'll never receive that miracle until we pursue Him. You see, there's a A human element to pursuit. I I believe this. You know, the children of Israel would have been satisfied to stay in Egypt. Comfortable in Egypt. They were good. It was good enough. They were comfortable. Until the enemy started chasing them. Then they realized they had to leave. Maybe some of us need to start being chased by the enemy in order to leave our Egypt. God, whatever it takes, do it in me so that I'll pursue you. We got to move. You know, the, the Jordan waters didn't cross till they put their feet in the Jordan. The sea didn't open up until there was a staff raised above it. There always is a human effort of pursuit before there's ever a miracle it's not just going to happen it's not just going to happen the woman with the issue of blood (laughs) boy we talk about pressing in she pressed in past everything that was a danger to her to touch the hem of his garment and we read that story where Jesus said who touched me His disciples, Jesus, everybody's touching you. No, no, no. Who touched me? Who meant to touch me? Does Jesus feel your touch greater than anybody else's on a Sunday morning? Are you willing to press through and be noticed? Seriously. Press through and be noticed. I want the Lord to notice me. I said, I want the Lord to notice me. I want the Lord to notice me. I want to do whatever it takes to get his attention. I want to make you uncomfortable. Because I want you to move too. So I got to come back here because it's dark. I can't see you when I'm up there. I want to touch the Lord. I want the Lord to know I'm reaching out for him this year. I want him, when I touch him, to say, who touched me? And I want all the disciples to say, we're all touching you. And then he's going to look at me and say, but Jimmy, you touched me. Does that make sense? I want more, immeasurably more in this next year in Jesus' name. I want you to want more this next year. Why? Because I want more for our church. And we'll never get more for our church if it's just me pursuing the Lord. Don't get nervous, people. I'm looking at you. I look at you from up here, too. We're just talking, right? Don't be nervous. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm just talking to you. This guy, he's like. (laughs) It's good, bro. We're friends, right? It's all good. I promise. Tukapamoja. We are together. I want more. I'm not satisfied with just this. This isn't enough for me. I want to see more of his power. I want to see more of his presence. I want to feel more of his healing in Jesus' name. I want to see miracles. I want to see miraculous provision in your lives in Jesus' name. Some of you are stuck. It's time to get unstuck in Jesus' name. 
It's time to get unstuck in Jesus' name. And you can't be sitting in the same seat you sit in every Sunday and expect God to do something different. If there wasn't enough anointing there last week, you might want to move to the other side of the sanctuary. That might help you. <laughs> the things we see as pastors, right? And by the way, I'm more comfortable here than I am up there, so you guys are in trouble. I want to see more of God moving in our church. I want more of his power. I want more of his presence. The third thing is this, more passion. More passion. He says, I pray out of his glorious riches, you would understand how high, how wide, how long, how deep is the love of Christ. Lord, make us passionate inside for you. Because you love us the way you do, let us love you back. Amen. More passion for him. I want more passion in our worship in Jesus' name. Amen. If, if we don't worship, the rocks will cry out. I want more passion in our worship. I want to see people crying out to God in Jesus' name. I want us hungry for him. Somebody say amen. Amen. I want to see more passion for the Lord. I want to see more passion for others. God, make us passionate towards lost people. Lord, when we pray, help us see what you see. Help us to hear their voices like you do when they cry out, God. Help us to understand where they are beyond what we see and what we understand. He said, this, this, this love that surpasses knowledge, God, take me beyond my own understanding of this world and help me to see it like you see it and make me passionate about people. Why? Because passion results in compassion. And we'll never reach out to them if we don't see them as lost. Amen. We'll never change the world unless we realize the world needs to be changed. Amen. So God, be a passion in me. Put a passion in me. For you. For others. And thirdly, Red, I want more passion for the church. Amen. I want more passion for the church. Ha, yes. <laughs> ha. I want more passion for the church. I want more passion in my church for the church. I want you to feel what I feel. I want you to be excited like I'm excited. When somebody says the ocean, you just go nuts. That's my church. That's my church. Oh, let me tell you about my church. Oh, I love the, I love the ocean church. Here's why I love the ocean church. You know why we don't do that? Because we're not invested in it. But if it's your connect group, you will tell everybody about your connect group. Why? Because it's your connect group. We're always good to tell people what we do. It's like where I'm from in Texas. Trucks. Everybody drives a truck. You get a new truck. Call up your friends. Hey, guess what, Red? I got a new truck. You ought to see it. It's four-wheel drive. It's jacked up. It'll go anywhere. Brand new, fuel-injected Ford F-350, diesel-powered. I got a new truck, and it's red. It's beautiful. You know, you know what I'm saying? We get something new we want people to see. That's why you wear your new clothes on Sunday, ladies. <laughs> Am I right? Shoot, yeah. It's Louis Vuitton, baby. <laughs> we be passionate when it's something we love, right? God, help us to love the church. So that when we talk about our church, we, we're passionate about our church, man. We tell everybody because God's moving in our church. We got a story to tell. We got a testimony to give. Why? Because we're passionate about our church. And the last thing is this, immeasurably more possibilities. Immeasurably more presence, immeasurably more power, immeasurably more passion, immeasurably more possibilities. He is the God of the impossible. He's the God of the impossible. He says, with me, all things are possible. I want immeasurably more possibilities. I don't know what it is you've prayed for, but God's got more. So much more. 
I don't know what it is you've dreamed about for your life, but God's got more possibility than that. I want more possibility for our church in Jesus' name. God, begin to open doors we've never seen open. God, make a way where there seems to be no way. Provide what's never been provided for before. We're trusting you. Why? Because we're greater through you than through ourselves. But if we're going to make a difference, church, it's going to have to be through him. God in us, God through us. Immeasurably more in 2024. And it all depends on this. The level of our pursuit. The level of our our pursuit will determine how much presence. The level of our pursuit will determine how much power. The level of our pursuit will determine how much passion. And the level of our pursuit will determine how many possibilities the Lord sets before us. If we sit still, He will not set any before us. There's no need. If you're just going to sit there, why? Why would he put something in front of us if he knows we're not going to go after it? Why would God give us an opportunity if he knows we're not going to chase it? But if he sees in us a hunger and a thirst and a desire to pursue more, he'll begin to set those possibilities in front of us. As we chase him, he'll reveal them. Somebody say amen. Amen. I believe that in Jesus' name. It all depends on our pursuit. If we will pursue the one who is able to do immeasurably more long enough and far enough, eventually we'll experience greater. Amen? Amen. 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 Why don't you stand with me in prayer? Greater in 2024. Immeasurably more. Man, I want to encourage you. Let's chase it. Let's go after it. Let's listen to the voice of the Lord. Let's listen to God speak. Let's hear what he has to say. Let's commit to being obedient, and let's chase after everything he has for us. Amen? Amen. You guys with me? If you're with me, say amen. Amen. If you're not, just walk out the door. Because we are going after him. Moja, kamoja, pamoja. Straight on. Right up. Right after him. Forward in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. We ain't going backwards, I pray. We're going after him. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today. We thank you, Lord, that there's so much more for us than we could ever ask or imagine. God, I pray that you stir our hearts for more. Stir our hearts, Lord, for greater. Stir our hearts for immeasurably more. Lord, we need more from you. We need you more, more than yesterday. More than our words can say, we need you, Lord. And Father, we pray that you would begin to stir our hearts for more more of your presence, more of your power working in us, more passion. Now make us passionate. Make us passionate. Hey, God. Open possibilities we never dreamed of. You may be here today, and you'd say, Pastor Jimmy, I I hear you. I'd love more from Jesus. I, I want greater in my life, but I don't even have a relationship with Jesus. I'm not walking in, in relationship with him. I, I'm far from Jesus. He's not Lord of my life. In fact, there's sin in my life, and I need to give my heart to Jesus today, and I want to. I desire that. If you're here this morning and that's you, I want to pray with you today. I want to pray for you. Jesus loves you, desires to be Lord of your life, desires for you to experience the salvation we talked about during communion. The blood of Jesus washes away all of our sins, but we have to ask We have to recognize his lordship in our life. We have to proclaim him as Lord and ask him to come and to forgive us of our sins and make us new. But once he does, we are new in Jesus' name. 
And maybe that's you today, and you'd say, Pastor Jimmy, I've never given my heart to the Lord. I've never surrendered my life to him, but I want to today. I want to give you an opportunity to do that. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, if that's you today, and you'd say, Pastor Jimmy, I need to surrender my heart to Jesus, would you simply raise your hand? I'm going to pray for you today. Anybody in this room, you'd say, I'm not in right relationship with Jesus, but I need to be. And I'm willing today to surrender my heart to Jesus. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand. I want you to just raise it up in the air so I can see it. Anyone today, if that's you, just raise your hand. Raise it up so I can see it. Don't raise it halfway because I don't know if you mean it or not. Anybody today, anyone in the house, I give you just a few seconds. Anybody today. Pastor Jimmy, I want to give my heart to Jesus. Ah, thank you. I see you. I see you, girl. The Lord sees you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Anybody else today? Anyone else today? I'll wait just a second. Ah, thank you. I see you. (laughs) Come on, in Jesus' name. Your lives are about to change forever. In Jesus' name. Anyone else today? Anyone else? I see that hand. Thank you. Thank you. I see it. Anyone else? Come on. I see you. I see you. It's like five or six today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I want everyone in the house to repeat after me. Heavenly Father, Father. today... I surrender to you. I know I'm a sinner. And I need you. Today I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. And make me new. I give my heart to you. I give my life to you. Today I choose to follow you. Today I choose to make you Lord of my life. Thank you, Jesus, Thank you, Jesus. For, dying for dying on a cross and setting me free. And setting me free. Today, I start anew Today I start anew to follow you, to follow you. Wherever, you wherever you lead. Be Lord of my life, Lord of my life. In, Jesus in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.